it says immerse yourself in Dolly's childhood memories. And there's the show times. So let's go. Behind us is a replica of Dolly's Tennessee Mountain Home. Right, and it's open all season. All year. Like all year, every basically. <laughs> every day that Dollywood's open, yeah, anyone open. can come and look inside her home, which I always thought was really cool. Yeah. Now, if you look at the show schedule, there's times listed, which is a first for us. Yeah, we've so, never caught it. We've noticed it a couple of times, but we're like, what is this? What does it mean? So let's go check out what a show time is and what it's for out here at Dolly's Tennessee Home. If you've never been in there before, and it's quite remarkable just to think about what Dolly is today and what her upbringing was like. Our little cabin may have been small, but it was full of love and laughter. Now, we had our share of hard times, too. Although we may have been poor, my mom and daddy always gave us everything they could, and all of us kids knew and appreciated that, although it was never spoken. If there was one thing about being poor, it's that it makes a person more creative. None of us kids ever had store-bought toys to play with when we were growing up, but sometimes Daddy would make us toys out of wood. And Mama made us things too. Once she made me a little doll out of a corn cob. She made it a little dress out of corn shucks and used corn silk for hair. Now, Daddy got the poker hot in the fire, and he used the tip of it to burn two black eyes in the corn cob. Well, I thought she was beautiful, and I named her Tiny Tasseltop. First song I ever wrote was about that little cob dog. It went like this. Little Tiny Tasseltop, I love you a awful lot. Corn silk hair and big brown eyes, how you make me smile. Little tiny tassel top, you're the only friend I got. Hope you never go away, I want you to stay. <laughs> well, what'd you expect? I was just a little kid. <laughs> Most different colors she could find. I knew she was making it just for me, so I watched her almost the whole time. Well, you can imagine how much work it took. I watched how she folded every edge of every little piece under and sewed it with whole stitches so there wouldn't be any ragged edges. And then she told me the story from the Bible about Joseph and the coat of many colors. Joseph's coat was given to him as a sign that he was loved and special. And that's how I felt. My mama was making mine. <laughs> I couldn't wait to wear my coat to school the very next day. I burst through the school door like a multicolored whirlwind, wondering just how many people were going to admire my coat. I was proud of it. Hey, see my new coat? I said to one boy. No, he said. Looks like a bunch of rags to me. And my little heart just sank. But surely the others would see how wonderful and special my coat was. But the other children just poked fun at me and at my coat. Soon it turned into a whole room of mocking faces, laughing, pointing, and jeering. And I wanted to tell them the story Mama told me about Joseph and make them understand. But they wouldn't hear it. My heart was broken and I couldn't understand my coat and my love for my mama. 
and my faith in myself. As painful as it was, that experience was a great blessing to me. It was what inspired me years later to write the song that has become my signature song, Code of Many Colors. It's my favorite song that I've ever written or recorded. And is the heart of the hum? Well, that's the truth. Being the fourth of 12 kids, you can imagine that there were a lot of needs Mama had to see to. Have you ever heard of stone soup? Well, sometimes Mama would announce that we were having stone soup for supper. She'd send us kids all out to pick out a stone. Well, we'd scour the whole countryside looking for just the right rock because we took it seriously as if that stone would actually make the soup better. And I suppose if a kid believes a rock can make soup better, it actually can. Sometimes I'd follow Daddy along when he was plowing in the fields, and I'd pick up all those rocks that seemed to have that stone soup magic, and I was squirreling away. And when Mama put out the call, well, I'd just head for my stash. When we'd found a rock and we'd come back into the kitchen, Mom would look at each stone and she'd talk about its merits and how well each child had done in discovering it. And then, without fail, she'd always choose the stone found by the neediest one of us. She would scrub it clean, she'd put it in that old black kettle as it boiled on the stove. Of course, she put in a few tomatoes and some okra, some potatoes, onions, and some salt pork. Our little cabin may have been small, but it was full of love and laughter. What do you think, Sandy? That was so cute and very touching. So you hear Dolly's voice herself, and there's actors who are playing the role of Dolly and Dolly's mom when well, Dolly when she was younger, and some stories about her childhood. Check those show times. I counted yeah. only about 18 people can fit inside <laughs> Dolly's <laughs> home to see that show. Yeah, so you want to get there early and just let other people bypass you that are just want to see the home so that way you got a good spot to see the show. Because it does happen in both of the rooms. Yeah, it's spread out. Um, it's three different stories and songs. And um, they will repeat them. Yeah, it looks like they repeated over again, which was very cool because then so it gives go. other people a chance to see after you leave. And I wish I had better camera shots, but like I said, when there's only 18 people in there, I only had yeah. so much I could move yeah. to focus in on the shots. Yeah, but it was really... I, I loved it. I'm glad we got to see it. Me too. So you see behind us, I don't know if you remember what that was. The Dolly Parton Museum. Exactly. But they got a big wall around it, Sandy. Yeah, and it says we're putting wings on our dreams, and I love what that means. Because if you weren't aware, in 2024, get ready for the Dolly Parton experience. Yeah, that's going to be yeah, so we're ready for you, Dolly, to go experience her new museum and everything they got going on in this area. Yep, that's something to look forward to next year. Another reason to follow us, because you know we'll be bringing you updates. Haven't hit that like and subscribe yet. What are you waiting for? Because you really never know where we're going to end up next, but you can rest assured we're definitely going to be here at Dollywood. Like we always say, be sure to make each and every day where you can dream more, be more, an adventure that rock. Looking for more fun photos and maybe little mini videos that we didn't include in this video you're watching now? Be sure to check out our TikTok, our Instagram, and our Facebook pages. And we're going to put those links also in the description down below.